happening with social emotional learning at Brockton Public Schools. We'll, we'll go through um, a lot about the entire um, district and what's going on, but it won't be too, too long. <laughs> so I wanted to start with the strategic plan because I wanted to point out that two of the four key goals from our strategic plan are related to social emotional um, well-being, which is wonderful. Um, the first one, well-being, fostering a safe and caring environment that allows all staff and students to thrive. And I pulled a quote from Jen Alexander, trauma expert and author, students will not have the internal energy for learning and growth if their safety and belonging needs are not met first. <coughs> and the next goal that's related to social emotional learning is connection. Promoting strong and positive interpersonal connections between all stakeholders, and that would include students, staff, families, and community members. Uh, and I pulled another quote, James Comer, professor of child psychiatry at Yale University, who stated that no significant learning occurs without a significant relationship. So next, to set the stage, what is social-emotional learning? And this is from CASEL, which is the Collaborative of Academic Social and Emotional Learning, um, whose primary mission is to grow SEL uh, from a promising theory um, into something that's an essential part of education. And social-emotional learning, SEL, is the process through which children and adults acquire and effectively apply the knowledge, attitudes, and skills necessary to understand and manage emotions, set and achieve positive goals, feel and show empathy for others, establish and maintain positive relationships, and make responsible decisions. Benefits of SEL. Hundreds and hun hundreds of studies have been uh, conducted involving more than a million students worldwide, pre-K through 12, with consistent evidence that SEL has a positive impact on academic achievement. Um, there's a link to what the research says here with CASEL. Um, I did share this presentation with Jay if you want any additional information or background. Um, however, I thought there were some key points uh, um, that were very important. Students participating in social emotional learning at school have higher levels of school functioning, and that's increased grades, test scores, attendance, Homework completion. SEL interventions that address the five core competencies, which I'll share with you in a minute, increase students' academic performance by 11 percentile points compared to students who don't participate in SEL. The positive impact on academics lasts long term. Years after students participate in SEL, their academic performance was an average of 13 percentile points higher than students who didn't participate. So now, fortunately, CASEL, the group that has um, come up with the five core competencies and, um, and rubrics that help us to measure the competency of students in these five core areas, um, CASEL and DESC, the Department of Education in Massachusetts, have combined efforts and now we are focused um, through DESC on these five competencies. And these are the five competencies that we're focused on. Um, so what, so um, taking this, this is the first year that we've, we've had this role. And uh, in this role, um, I have started focusing on um, educating staff on the, the five core competencies, um, send out a monthly newsletter that references these competencies. Um, in collaboration with an SEL PLC, created rubrics that, um, that actually take the five competencies, match it up with what we, the way we um, indicate progressing on report cards, and um, the teachers can, uh, and staff can actually, you know, they can actually rate a student on the rubric. Um, so we've created rubrics um, for grades two, three, grades four, six, and grades seven through 12. 
and working on creating rubrics for pre-K one, but that's a little bit more difficult because they're self student self-assessment rubrics. We have the teacher rubrics, but um, the student self-assessment self rubrics are a little bit more difficult with the little ones. Um, this fall, we purchased, um, with the help of a grant, thank you, Jay, um, themed library books that are related to SEL as well. And then in addition to that, uh, Jen Mannion has been helping me to purchase a few more books for middle school, high school, and some of the libraries. So we're expanding our resources uh, with SEL as well. And then with regard to the rubrics I just mentioned to you, um, actually created 18 by 24 rubrics, um, posters for grades two through six so that they're in every teacher's classroom at this point. <clears throat> so the next, the next thing I wanted to mention is that um, every school in our district adheres to this MTSS, which is multi-tiered system of support. And in this case, we work with teams, we collaborate with experts in all different areas within our school system to ensure that all students' needs are being met at different levels based on their needs. So tier one is universal support, which means that that's something that everybody gets. So when we have a whole school assembly or um, we you know, have somebody come from class to class, um, you know, that's a universal support. Tier two supports, targeted supports, are for certain students, and then tier th three supports are intensive supports. And uh, another one, another quote that I, I found from the Justina Schlund, Vice President of Communications Castle, one thing I learned as a first year teacher, there is no such thing as focusing solely on academics. SEL is always embedded. And here we have Castle's 10 indicators of school-wide SEL. We're currently addressing each one of these as I look through and as I move through this presentation, you will see that we are currently addressing these in our schools. However, there's always room to grow. So the initial phase of, of my role was really to collect the information and see what we are doing as a district in SEL. And then the next step will be, okay, where do we need to you know, work more on? Where do we need to grow? But this is a, this is a nice guide line that the state would like us to follow. Um, SEL practices across the district. So I started with um, SEL practices across the district and now I'll, and then I'll take you through the different levels so that you can see what's being done in each, each level. So SEL practices across the district, you know, we've been charged with ensuring that students have ma are making connections with the adults that are working with them. Uh, in a number of ways, for example, uh, our SEL grades two through six PLC, uh, we're meeting actually tomorrow afternoon and we are going to be working on creating the connection survey that will go out to students to determine who they feel connected to. In addition to that, we have teachers that work on relationship mapping where they are determining how, they f how much information have they learned about their children, beginning of the year, middle of the year, and then would do it again at the end of the year. Um, the positive behavior interventions and supports are really related to expectations, so teaching expectations uh, in each school. Uh, everyone is doing this um, and then reinforcing those expectations as needed throughout the year. Student support teams, every school has a student support team that um, teachers can bring students to if they feel the need that they need additional interventions or they need a team to discuss um, strategies to help that student academically, behaviorally, uh, emotionally, socially. And we now have adjustment counselors in all our schools, um, guidance counselor, um, we have guidance counselors at the high school and the middle school and um, school psychologists um, are supporting every school in the district, as are the behavior specialists, um, who are also further supported by the BCBA for the district. So SEL at the pre-K to grade one level. Um, we have implemented second step program, pre-K through grade eight this year, um, piloted it um, last spring but it's implemented now 
and the PLC is actually conducting a mid-year survey right now. So we're actually going to look at those results tomorrow during our PLC meeting and uh, see how well that program's going. The uh, responsive classroom at the grade um, pre-K through grade one level has been in place for a couple of decades. A long, long time, very consistent. Um, they focus on core values that are in fact related to the five castle competencies. Um, they have a word of the week that aligns the um, skill building embedded in literature. We are providing them with additional literature through the grant, but also social thinking is a collection of books that help. Uh, really cute zones of regulation. You've probably seen something like this where you've got the red, yellow, green, um, orange, um, zones of regulation, shaking your head. <laughs> zones of regulation that help, um, help students, adjustment councils will often use it, administrators will use it, teachers can use it. Um, in the younger grades, they might have like a little, um, a little clip item on their desk where the teacher can clip up when the student is moving up in, in behavior, so there's a, there's a visual there for a student. Relationship mapping, I had mentioned uh, the teachers are doing to ensure that they're getting to know their kids. So if you literally have like something in front of you that you're saying, what do I know about this one? What do I know about this one? What do I know about this one? You feel more comfortable as you start to realize that, well, I haven't talked to him for a week or I haven't, you know, so, you, so trying to make those connections on a regular basis is really, really important. So let me go to SEL at the grades two through six level. Second step program implemented this year and the SEL PLC, so we have members from both uh, North Street and Millbury Street. Um, tomorrow's the first time that, that Millbury Street is joining us, which is wonderful. Our teachers are also up through grade five, still doing responsive classroom morning meetings where you know SEL naturally integrates, and it integrates daily at the pre-K through one level as well. Um, the two schools, you know, we, we have our own personalities, I guess you'd say. Um, so for example, MSCS has the CARES program, NSCS has the STARS program, but they really are very similar in their core, their core values. And we each have a certificate program that, um, we have a certificate program that we recognize students for meeting those core values on a monthly basis. Um, we have classroom quotes that we're working on. Each class selected a quote that represented them at the beginning of the year, thereby building community. Um, Big and Little Buddies program at MSCS, uh, where we have the older students helping the younger students. We do the same thing at NSCS, um, bus helpers, um, you know, walking the second graders to the bus, picking them up, making sure they get to their classrooms. Um, we have a principal kiosk. This is more for, um, for the staff, but we have SEL resources um, that are available to our staff. Skill building embedded in literature, mentioned that. Uh, you're gonna see a lot of consistency with the different um, levels. Shrewsbury Youth and Family Services is a community resource that the district has contracted with where we have a clinician come into the school and it's, um, it's a referral basis through our um, school counselors, uh, school psychologists, admin, um, where if we feel a student needs uh, counseling but does not have that on the outside, um, we can make a referral to Shrewsbury Youth and Family Services and they receive eight weeks of, of counseling and this Shrewsbury Youth and Family Services actually helps the family with referrals to get outside counseling, um, which is a huge help when uh, there are so many families that um, are having a difficult time getting outside counseling for their children. And then we still do zones of regulation at the two through six level. Middle school, second step program again, done a little bit differently because it's done through the guidance counselor. Um, they're doing whole school workshops. Um, they're doing um, the health curriculum has integrated within it SEL topics. There is uh, quite a bit of GMS-GHS collaboration where, uh, for example, the health classes at the high school come down to the middle school and teach social justice issues. There were stations that were phenomenal, um, which is wonderful because students 
the middle school students enjoy learning from the high school students, for sure. Um, a wide variety of enrichment clubs and activities, and that's interest-based. So then you find, you know, you, you know, you vibe, find your tribe. So um, you might, you know, be really interested in something, and, and maybe, maybe in particular classes you have, you don't, not really connecting, but then you go to a club and you connect with somebody. So they're important. And again, the SEL library books. We have the Lighthouse program at the, at the middle school. That would be a TF3 program. Again, Shrewsbury Youth. And, um, and Mr. Brzezinski has started Principal's Advisory Group, um, where he's meeting with students on a regular basis. And these are students across the student body that were nominated from each class. Uh, and he's, you know, he's talking to these students on a regular basis. I want to say it's once every three weeks. And he's, he's asking these students what the topics are that we should be talking about. You know, and this is coming from student perspectives. So, which is important, student voice, one of those 10 castle, um, you know, what do we need for SEL in the schools? And that is one of them, we need student voice. And there's a lot of good student voice at the high school, right? <laughs> <laughs> so at the high school level, we have a number of enrichment clubs activities. I tried not to do the, you know, don't do for slides and try not to include a lot of like print, but there's just so much information to share about what's happening with SEL. So, you know, career fears, grade level seminars. Um, one of the highlights, in my opinion, when I was interviewing the principals was the Gator Gab. Um, Deb Goodwill um, meets with Gator Gab student leaders um, once every seven days, and they decide on what the topics are. There is also a Gator Gap committee from school council that communicates with this group as well. And um, some of the examples, so then, um, then the Gator, so Gator Gap is groups getting together during extended block. Um, they, so first and third Wednesday, so twice a month, they'll get together and discuss the topics that come, that come up. So the first one, was phone social media impact on our lives and our brains. The next one was generations, the impact of age, the age gap. There was critical thinking, problem solving scenarios. There's also empathy, I don't know if these are coming up or you've already done them, but empathy in action and exploring the joy of giving, service learning with letter and card writing to the elderly. So a variety of topics, but the students are having a great say in what topics they're focused on, which is wonderful, student voice. And then of course we have the health curriculum, G term, the last three days of school, and um, Shrewsbury Youth as a support. So community partnerships, these are just, I need to stress these are just examples because there are so, so many of them. Um, it, it, we, we, co we collaborate with community in so many different ways. Parent teacher groups, I put PTG there, but I do know that there's also at the high school level and the middle school level, I know the middle school is starting a PTG, but, uh, but we've always had a consistent group of parents <coughs> for different like, committees. So depending on what committee we need, um, parents have been there, re very, very supportive of us. Um, the police department and the fire department in so many ways. The police department helping us out as school resource officer, but also with Alice. And the Grafton Fire Department offers programs for the elementary school, practice drills, giving us advice as to how to improve the safety of our buildings, always, both groups. DA Joe Early's office has an outreach program including cyber safety, bullying prevention, and empathy, and um, you know, we've, we've drawn on their resources as well. As a matter of fact, um, NSCS, we have um, this group coming in to do the cyber safety presentations for both students and in the evening parents um, in January. Um, Shrewsbury Youth and Family Services I talked about, but, and, but also connections with a number of emergency mental health services in the area um, so that when students are in need or families are in need, we're able to connect families to, to different groups. Um, the School Adjustment Council is this year are now adding a re an extensive resource list at the end of their emails so whenever they communicate with family, 
um, they are providing families with an extensive resource list for them um, that, that works actually for kids or adults, children or adults. And we also want to include a focus on adult SEL. Um, so uh, right now I am piloting a book study at NSES, and it's the book called Heart, and it is about our profession and the why behind our profession. And I can't even tell you, the meetings are just, they're wonderful. Um, we have a, a quite a cross section of about 13 staff members that meet once a month uh, for this book study, and, um, and everybody really opens up and talks about how they feel and how it's kind of bringing us back to our why. Um, we actually focused uh, this last, we just had a meeting last Wednesday and focused on gl triggers and glimmers. And I'm not sure, I don't know if you've heard this before, but you know, we have the triggers that upset us, but we also need to remember and find the glimmers. The glimmers are those like small moments that, um, that really mean something to us. And you know, and so to force, to get ourselves to like notice the glimmers, the little small things that are happening in our lives that are good. So we had a wonderful conversation on that. Monthly SEL newsletter, um, I'm sending that out to the entire district. It's a collection of resources to, to help with both um, student activities and also staff themselves, educator self-care. Um, there are always se there's a section in every newsletter for that as well. After school collaboration, the adults are focusing on you know getting together, doing things. It, it might be you know going to visit Board and Brush for an activity or um, or meeting somewhere else. Um, we also have um, our PTG has been amazing about recognizing staff and students and providing enrichment for students. Sunshine Starlight funds those are for the um, the both the both the um, the very happy and sometimes the very sad events that happen in our adult lives. And um, we're recognizing each other and supporting one another. And then we have our district employee assistance program, which can be virtual or, um, or, or in person or online. It's a wonderful system <coughs> of support with counselors if our staff need that as well. We also have like just, just fun things. For example, name that tune on Thursday morning. Play an old, old song. And whatever teacher like gets it first, runs down and gets a $5 Dunkin' gift card. You know, you should see them run. So sometimes it's just those little fun things that can, can brighten everybody. We had a Friendsgiving that was absolutely wonderful. Amazing food that we all, you know, brought in and celebrated with one another. Um, so next steps. To narrow it down, clearly each program we're looking at, we're evaluating on a regular basis. Next steps, Navigate 360 is a suite of services. We're looking in particular at the behavior intervention, restorative practices, and safety, ALICE. So we already have the ALICE upgrading to the most recent version of it. And now we're looking at behavior intervention and restorative practices, which would be wonderful. Um, they, this particular Navigate, Navigate 360 provides uh, us, should we choose to go with this, provides us with the um, resources to address behaviors, but to, you, but to educate students when behaviors occur versus you can't, not just discipline, you can't just do that because that doesn't change behavior. So we want to um, have, uh, have resources that we can refer to for a variety of different um, challenges that may come up um, as students grow up. And then um, the, the second area of focus would be um, parent guardians supporting them. I'm hoping to provide resources to parents to add to the principal newsletters um, so that parents will have resources. And I found a couple of really wonderful ones. Uh, one, for example, is Confident Parents, Confident Kids. There is a book put out with that name, but it's a wonderful website that offers all sorts of resources to parents. And then there's another one called Parenting Montana that granted it was created by this to someone in the state of Montana. Massachusetts is actually creating one for Massachusetts, but literally a parent could click on the age of their child and then look at a topic 
anger, you know, self-confidence, um, you know, making friends, anything. The age, click on the topic, and you will receive, like, guidance on how to talk to your children, what strategies to use, what activities to use, things like that. So um, I'd like to just start, like, branching out into that area to help. And I just provided a few resources, and that is it. Do you have any questions? Excellent. Thank you so much, Roseanne. Um, I'll kick it off. Does anybody have any questions? <coughs> Amy. Thank you. As always, um, that was very informative, and there's a lot of stuff that I'm going to have to go home and look at now. Um, is there any chance that we could get an update on the second step once you have your meeting yeah. and you figure that out? I just <coughs> would like to have a better sense because I feel like this is probably a presentation we're going to get once a year, and a year is a long time. This is a really serious issue, and I want to make sure that progress is, I'm sure progress is being made, but I'd like to know more about it. Um, I think SEL is really, really important, and we have so many in our districts, th our district that just don't understand what it is and what it isn't, no matter how much you communicate, no matter how much you try to explain it. And it's nice for me to have information to tell parents who come to me. And, you know, I don't know what this SEL stuff is all about. Okay, well, here's some resources for you. And by the way, here's this program that we've had for a while now, and here's what it's done. Here are some results. Because I think people just don't, they don't understand. It seems like this big, mysterious thing that we're never going to make any progress on. And I think that's wrong. I think we are making progress. Um, in terms of talking to parents and caregivers, I think that's something that I saw it in the, one of the slides. I think that's something that needs to be beefed up. I think a lot of parents are not understanding what they're getting or they're not getting it at all, and I'm not sure if that's school dependent or what. I know I'm on one newsletter mailing list, and I haven't really seen much about it. So that might be something to look at moving into next year. Um, you know, how can we put this at the front of parents' minds, too? Because right now it's not. They're seeing report cards and star assessments. They're not seeing SEL, um, which is a shame because I know we're putting a lot of effort into that and I want I want it to be recognized and I want it to be appreciated so thank you again thank you thank you Laura has a question. I appreciate okay. that it's Lee Laura um, <laughs> <laughs> it's December we're getting silly <laughs> great presentation this is uh, I'm gonna echo Amy, Amy's sentiments that you know this is a really important thing that's happening in our schools that I don't think is always well understood by everybody in the community um, so sort of on a related note, I'm curious if you can talk a little bit more about the rubrics and how they're being used. So, you know, are parents <coughs> who are watching going to walk away and think, like, is this another grade our kids are getting? Or, you know, how is, how is the rubric used in practice, right. um, particularly for interventions or, you know, to sort of for development, you know, how it's individualized, yes. if at all? For example, um, the, the, we actually placed the... Um, so the, the rubric has the five competencies. Mm -hmm. So for each of the five competencies, we have placed a rating of, um, you know, is meeting, not meeting, you yep. know, progressing, um, meeting. Uh, and so, and then there's a definition for each. So prior to parent-teacher conferences, these rubrics were provided to teachers so that if they wanted to speak to the parent specifically about where their child is in each of the five competencies, they could do so. It gave them some concrete language that related directly to the five competencies. Uh, on the report card, we just uh, designed updated grades, K through five report cards, and prior to this report card that just came out last week, it was habits of mind mm -hmm. that were included in the report card that were really not related uh, specifically to SEL or to the five competencies. We actually changed that section of the report card specifically to the five competencies. And um, the teachers, again, could use the rubrics for the comments that they added to the report card that were in alignment but you are right, we should, we should share these rubrics with parents, mm -hmm. um, and I appreciate your input on that, um, because we have not done that yet. Only in that teachers would share what their child, where their child is on the five competencies. So I feel that 
if I can do anything this year in the first year in this role, is to, to have people understand the five competencies. And is there any sort of um, customization to age? So when you look at the mm -hmm. competencies, is there like some level of detail as mm -hmm. to there where a high is. schooler should be versus a fifth grader, right? Yeah, so, so grades two through three, so there's a grade two, three rubric that okay. has smiley faces or sad faces and middle level faces, I don't know what call them. <laughs> <laughs> Straight faces. Um, and then you have the um, grades four through six that has toned down language that students can understand. Now, mind you, um, for, the, for the grades two through six, we have actually, um, I've, I've had these um, created, these posters created. They're up in every classroom so the teacher can refer to them Great. when something happens. Um, and then, then seven through 12 is actually the language from Castle because seventh grade through 12th grade can understand, better understand that language. Now this takes adults, you know, to work them and walk them through this as well. Uh, it's very important that SEL is not only taught in a lesson but integrated daily in, in a million different ways and how many times I'm sure the three high schoolers right here know how many times in a class have you referred to SEL, something related to SEL, the teacher has stopped and discussed something or you've had like a quick lesson about something and it, it needs to be integrated in the moment at times so we're trying to do as much of that as possible as well but yeah so the rubrics I mean I have I mean I can share copies of the rubric I can't do it right now <laughs> fair enough it's <coughs> great but I thank will do you that. it's wonderful it's actually I don't know if you get my SEL newsletters but um, there they have I've been um, putting the rubrics in there each month for the past couple of months figuring if they don't see it the first time maybe they'll see it yeah. the second time and they'll keep doing it <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> Great presentation, thank you. Thank you. Students, do we have any questions? Um, I don't think, I personally on my school, no, I don't think I've seen the newsletter. No, it's just the staff. It's just staff? staff? It is uh, staff. Oh, staff. I thought you said it's just the staff and students, I misheard. No, yeah, it's, it's really geared towards staff. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, <coughs> I, like, when you were talking about the data jab, um, I know that, um, like, all of the topics that we've had so far are, like, pretty different. But um, is there, for some of the like topics, like I remember like when we talked about like phones and stuff, the students were like giving a lot of their input. Is there like any way for the teacher to like share what the students are saying? I can ask, Mrs. Goodfell. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say that I really like the focus on like student voice because I think it's super important and we get a lot across. Um, and I was wondering if that's possible at the middle school level or even sixth grade, because I know they have a lot to say too. <laughs> and if you've tried to do anything with them. Yeah, so the middle school, um, the, the new principal has um, started the principal's advisory group. And that's the group. So there are 23 students. They collect information from their classrooms and they bring it to the meetings so that they can discuss topics that are pertinent to the student body. But, oh, okay. you know, it's new, it's brand new, just started. Um, we, you know, we did um, prior years, uh, when I was principal, we did Brave Spaces where a student could express themselves in different ways. Um, we did SEL lessons in the classroom um, where students could express themselves. But no, you were right. I mean, student voice is very, very important. Thank you. Dave, did you have a question? Yeah, I just wanted to obviously thank Roseanne and recognize the just the wonderful work that she's done everything that you heard tonight prior to the last six months would have fallen on myself and Kristen among the other million things that we had going on and never did it with the fidelity or the the quality that Roseanne's brought to the table I I think when we talked about this unique split role um, the goal was to get to where even where we are now, and I think I said I didn't expect much of anything in the you first six to months. On two through six, but yeah, like know. get that job but then and you then put out that I was the SEL. Well, whatever director. I did, I did right. <laughs> it was the fact that we've done so incredibly well for the first time coordinating district wide everything you heard about tonight, and we've gotten at least with the, the 
teachers, which I th is way ahead of where I thought we'd be. Uh, I'm just incredibly proud of the work, and I love the, the idea of now expanding to parents is obviously a great one. We've talked about it. We, the fact that we can do that in a meaningful way in the second half of the year is a mm -hmm. real testament to all of the effort you put in. We're way ahead in a high quality way of where I thought thank we'd you. be. So, no, thank, thank you. And at the same time, I can speak on behalf of North Street. You've done a wonderful job there. And that's what I really prioritize, doing two six as the primary and this is secondary. But uh, just couldn't be happier with the work. Thank so you. Thank you. Very much. It's made a real difference. Okay, so one more thing. I have a little bit. Uh, this is optional homework. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I mean for everyone this is um this is something that I shared with the staff I did share in the newsletter but this is the six <coughs> dimensions of wellness and I thought at the end of the year this might be a nice thing for you to look at because it's actually an exercise where you look at how balanced your own life is <laughs> not <laughs> at all <laughs> do we have a homework policy I thought we had a homework policy I'm gonna opt I out. we all could use this but it's an optional homework policy and um, I think it'd be a really fun activity to do before the new year. Thank all right. You, well, I'm in on it. So I haven't had a chance to um, speak. You kind of usurped me. Yeah, that's I didn't want to under, you know, it's like serving food. You can't, you have to have enough. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Roseanne. I just, um, I am thrilled that you are in this position. Um, I think we've, We've always done SEL in the schools, or we, not always, we've made it a priority <coughs> for the past decade. Um, I personally kind of believe, and I might be wrong, it should be, it's a fabric. When you said it's integrated, it shouldn't be like, now we're doing SEL. And um, unfortunately, SEL has had some bad publicity. So maybe that's where parents come up with things. Um, but it shouldn't be something it should be part of our fabric and who we are as a district. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful that we're getting um, all this extra attention to it and I love and expanding it and thinking of new ways to integrate and get student voice. I think it's phenomenal. Um, my question, the rubric kind of threw me off to be honest. Um, I look back and I think of something like social awareness, relationship skills. How do you measure that if somebody, like, um, either if you're in, um, a, in a typical student or a typical student or somebody that's super shy and might be socially awkward, like, getting something like that on in writing, like, your social awareness is a frowny face to me. Like, <laughs> can you share with that? I'm sure that's not what it is, but yeah. can you share with that more to me? Um, because that... I guess to me the measurement of it can really kind of threw me off a little bit. So the the rubric, so the rubric that the teachers use, they will choose how to word the language in anything, a mm -hmm. report card, and that would be a report card. But the actual rubrics that I told you are posters, those are student self assessments. So they are looking at them, figuring out where am I and what do I need. Um, so for example, if a student if, if there is a student that, that we know could use an increase in social skill yeah. development, we would then go to, which I mentioned, the student support teams would meet and talk about that student. And, um, you know, just yesterday, talked about, you know, the student and then referred the student for additional time with an adjustment counselor to work very specifically on specific skills in relationship management. Perfect, so, so like reading or something like, if you needed some extra supports in reading, you would sit with like, so something like that sort of thing. Yeah, so it's okay. the same thing, it just, it's, it's SEL. Right. But, it's, but it's, it's in one of the five competencies, so we know who, you know, who may need some extra assistance, and so we are talking more that language than we probably have and recognizing that it's just as important. So for example, yesterday, I had a student in my office um, who said, well, what does it matter to you that I did, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, it does. He goes, it doesn't impact you. And I said, well, it does, because it hurts my heart. He, go, and he, <laughs> he said something to the effect that, um, well, that's just figurative. And I said, actually, I said, things that hurt, you know, someone's emotions and someone's heart 
can be just as painful or worse than a broken bone. So we had that conversation um, like that. So I feel like we're, we're talking more and acknowledging more the impact of emotional challenges or the fact that someone may be a little weak in an area. And if we don't, like if you just have the competency, not everyone is understanding the different levels within that competency. So the rubrics are helping to define it so that the adults can have more discussion about it. But the students are seeing the levels and they're kind of seeing like, well, maybe this is, you know, where am I at as well? Um, but I don't, I haven't, I haven't felt any negativity come from it yet. <laughs> Until me. No. Thank you. <laughs> that's okay, but that's really important. Sorry. No, and thank you. That was exactly, that, that was a perfect answer. I really appreciate it. I'm, and just to reiterate, I have, oh, I think SEL is top before anything. You, you kind of said it earlier. I once heard a speaker and she was talking about anxiety and how if you have anxiety, 90% of your brain is taking up being anxious. You have 10% of your brain left to try to learn. And that to me is, you, you can't. So having all of this first helps you learn uh, so much better. So it's super important. I love having you in this role. Um, it's great to see you. Thank you. And Thank you. Good yeah, to see you Yeah, we'd love to have too. you come back to kind of hear the, the results and things. So we'll, we'll get you out of the spring. But happy holidays, and Thank Roseanne, you. wonderful happy to see you. Happy holidays to all of you as well. Thank you. All right, thank you. We get to follow that. Frank, it's so good to see you. Good. We have Frank, um, who is going to give us an operations update. And we're really excited to have you here. And thank you for taking on some additional responsibilities this year um, as well. We've heard amazing things about you. So I'm excited to hear what you have to share. Um, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here as well. So uh, yeah, operations. Um, I'm going to give you sort of the umbrella of operations, but I, I did want to start with this slide because um, uh, this walkway at the high school, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but the walkway has had, you, you all may be familiar with it, there, there were potholes in the, in the walkway. And those have been there for quite a while since I started. I started last year in a different role. I was working a different role in the district. And um, they used to really bother me. And then when it became my responsibility uh, to oversee the, the um, fixing of the, of the walkway, um, it, it posed more challenges than I anticipated. But we did fix the walkway. I think the walkway is pothole free for the first time in at least two years. So I'm pretty excited about that. We're gonna lead with a win. Always. Um, there's the operational uh, operations department, excuse me. Uh, we uh, oversee custodians, uh, our maintenance staff, uh, of which we now have five uh, maintenance members. Uh, we have one opening, so four and one opening. Um, uh, I work a lot with our um, lead nurse, um, Jackie Davis, and, and, and uh, the nurses. Transportation, um, the rental of our facilities, food services, and um, capital projects fall under our department. And when I say our, um, I'm the director and Shauna Carlson, uh, who used to work primarily with the custodians, now uh, works with me and we sort of share these responsibilities um, in ways that are, I think, are, are working pretty well. Um, so I'm going to lead with custodial services. Uh, custodial services of all those areas are, are probably the area that was um, uh, moving along most smoothly, if you, if you will, in my opinion. Um, and there is just sort of a, a breakdown of the number of custodians we have in each building. North Street, I will po uh, point out, has three custodians um, on second shift. Two of them are sort of permanent. One is a float, and when we have coverage needs in other buildings, we pull that custodian out of that building. So, uh, The maintenance staff, uh, th this is probably where I've brought like the most change. Uh, really want to emphasize our responsiveness to, to uh, problems, and, and we've heard a lot of stories. I, I know um, Roseanne left, but it, at North Street, there's this classic story that there was a pipe located, like sticking out of the ground, sort of in the back of the school, and it had been there for quite a while. 
And um, we couldn't, then I, I, we went to find the pipe. We couldn't find the, we, f we located the pipe. The pipe had been removed. It was just a piece of metal like, <laughs> in, the, in the field. Um, but uh, our responsiveness, we want to make sure we're, we're dealing with, with things pretty rapidly. Make sure things are safe in all the buildings for all our students and, and staff. Um, trying very much to organize our maintenance spaces as well as um, be efficient so um, we don't send someone to paint and then do some electrical work and then some plumbing work. We try to group our projects in a logical way to make sure um, our, our uh, team is working efficiently. And the last two, communication and transparency. Um, I'm a big spreadsheet guy and <coughs> one thing that we're doing um, I think pretty well is, is we note the issues that are brought to our attention on a spreadsheet and that's shared with all the principals and lead custodians and um, maintenance folks. So everyone knows uh, where there's issues across the district and how they're being addressed. And when they get addressed uh, a little further, we update pretty regularly. When I say regularly, I mean um, daily. So there's eight spaces, eight major spaces. Um, there's the six schools, the GAIN program, which is the, the bread guy um, down on uh, Prov Providence Road. Uh, and then our maintenance garage, which is the old fire station. Um, believe it or not, there's a lot of work that needs to be done up there. Um, I mentioned our new online ticketing system jobs. When they come in, we, we ask the person reporting them, the people that can report jobs, our principal, uh, any administrator, excuse me, um, and then the lead custodians. So if you're in a building or if a student has a problem, great example, you would let your teacher know, the teacher would let somebody in the main office know, and then the principal or the principal could ask the, the lead custodian to put in a ticket uh, to get a particular issue addressed. Um, those jobs, we ask them to self-report the urgency. Does it need to be done right away? That would be, in, and again, the color system that Roseanne, <laughs> similarly, I, I was a building principal for 12 years. Uh, we use, uh, red is uh, urgent, needs to be done right away. Then there's like pretty, pretty urgent, like one to three days and then, you know, if you, we could get this done in the next two weeks, that would be great. And then put it on the wish list for whenever there's uh, a break in the in the action. Um, and then Shauna Carlson and I review those, and then we determine whether or not. And sometimes we have to go out and inspect the issue ourselves, but whether or not that's something that our maintenance staff can handle, we she or I can sometimes handle, or um, we need to go out to a vendor and and get quotes for for some work. Um, for instance, I'll just something that just popped in my head, behind North Grafton Elementary School, uh, we just got that beautiful roof put on the, um, j over the gymnasium, and there's a lot of uh, foliage and trees growing too close to the school, and there's a tree overhanging the school. So our maintenance staff went out there, and we, we looked at it, and they could manage a good chunk of it, but there was one or two beefy trees that, if they made a mistake, could be really bad news for our, and they're not arborists, and, and tree removal folks. So we're, we've, we're, we went out to a, uh, a vendor. A vendor's gonna take care of that over um, the holiday break. Seasonal systems, um, there, there were no seasonal systems when, when um, I came into place that, that I could work off of, so we're creating them ourselves, which isn't a bad thing. Um, Sean and I are new to these roles. So uh, at the end of the fall, so you, when I say seasonal, it's Basically, there's four seasons, of course, but we, we primarily work with three, and it, it's usually aligned with the sports seasons. So at the end of each season, we're, we're going to have like a, a laundry list of things to, to go through to make sure that the high school and middle school areas are buttoned up and, and anything else on the, on the outside areas in the other schools, um, as well as how we address like heating systems and, and everything else in the buildings. I think I mentioned our spaces. We, we have to make sure that they're clean and organized so that they're, they're, it's efficient to work in, in there. And one thing that we've discovered is a lot of um, equipment that hasn't functioned in a long time. So it's been sitting there taking up space in a storage area. People have boxed, put boxes over and around it. And our attitude is if it doesn't work, let's see what it takes to get it fixed so that we can use it or if, we, if it's unusable forever, then let's discard it. Um, I don't know if you've looked behind the high school. We've, we've uh, cleaned that area significantly um, because
because there was a lot of materials back there that were not being used. Um, collaborating with uh, fire, and more fire than police, basically we walk through all the buildings to get our uh, building occupancy permits and they go through and they point out issues that we should address that are aligned with fire, police, safety regulations, building regulations. Sean and I, Sean did most of them. Um, we, we went through and we created a spreadsheet for each school and we shared it with all the principals. Here are all the issues. We think you should handle these, we're gonna handle these, these we're gonna farm out to vendors to fix if there's an issue. And those go out and I've already um, notified the assistant fire chief that we believe we'll be through all those um, by the end of January. Everything will be um, copacetic. Keys, we now manage all the keys in the buildings, which is really challenging, <laughs> way more challenging than I thought. But we have a really good system. I, I have to give full credit to the technology department when I was starting and drowning a little bit in the beginning. Um, Neil and uh, some of his staff were very um, helpful in organizing all the keys. But now they're, they're all organized, so if, if folks need a key and they don't have extra keys for that particular space in their building, they can contact us and we can figure out a way to get them a key which is, sounds so easy, but it's really <laughs> not easy. It's very challenging. Um, and then trainings for custodians and maintenance staff. There's a lot of trainings that um, I think we're, we're a little behind in that we haven't done in quite a while um, that we have to uh, make sure we set up a system, and this goes back to the seasonal, where we're gonna probably do these annually. There's um, a HERA training, which is uh, for asbestos. There's um, heavy equipment training. There's ladder training. Um, all kinds of different things. What we have done really well, going back to w when Shauna was working with the custodial uh, folks, is she's done a really nice job making sure they know what products to use where and how to keep uh, those products safe and the building safe with the custodial services. But we have some work to do um, with, as I said, the um, asbestos and with uh, heavy equipment. Um, nursing, I, I meet regularly with uh, Jackie Davis, <coughs> excuse me, um, and we're trying to always navigate, and we wanna make sure she has everything she needs and, her, and all the nurses need in all the different buildings. Uh, she does a great job with the schedule. I don't have to micromanage that one bit. When, when folks are out, she moves people around uh, appropriately. And you know, one of the things in our collaboration that she was really struggling with that I think we've addressed as an example is our field trip situation in the town of Grafton. So we had some schools, there would be three, four schools going out on field trips and each field trip needed a nurse and we just didn't have enough nurses in the, in the system to um, accommodate that. So we just put it out on a calendar that you have to like pick a date when you're gonna go and if somebody else is going, then you can't go that day. So only one field trip in the district a day, unless there's an extending circumstance. And then um, obviously we're, she does a great job following the statewide trends and, and, and um, messaging to put out to staff and, and students and families you know, regarding different things that are quote unquote coming down the pike. Transportation, um, this was obviously very busy in um, late August, early September. It's, it's died down a little bit, but I still probably speak daily with um, Monica at AA Transportation double-A transportation, and um, she's great, pretty responsive, uh, very, not pretty responsive, she's responsive, and I appreciate uh, having the opportunity to work with her. S uh, the beginning of the year, I was reviewing all the bus stops when people had questions as uh, could they get their bus stop a little bit closer to their house. I would start my day and just visit. It was a great way to learn the town pretty fast, um, <coughs> uh, visit the different bus stops. And, um, Officer Al's has been wonderful when, when there's, uh, there's a couple of spots that, that people don't always obey the traffic laws like pretty consistently. So he'll send, he'll either go out himself or send out a colleague and they'll um, either give warnings or tickets to people that are not obeying the bus. It's an opportunity to educate the community. Um, and then we just in finally installed traffic lights. It was again, more challenging than I thought it would be up at North Street. Um, there was one that was not working for quite a while and we finally got that working. It flashes and it tells you if you're going over the speed limit, which is exactly what it's supposed to do. <coughs> Use of facilities, um, Ms. Marr, uh, you, you were mentioning uh, our theater, like that, that's a big 
rental spot in our district, as well as our athletic fields. And, and of course, we want to make ourselves available to the community. The community um, supports the schools. Uh, this is a lot more complicated and challenging than um, than it seem than it looks because you have to. The, obviously, the the middle school and the high school get dibs on the fields and the in the facilities in those spaces, um, but things like weather that we get a lot of in New England uh, can have an impact on scheduling, and it, it's really complicated when you have people renting too many of the dates. So we, we meet weekly and we review all requests, and when there's conflicts, we problem solve to try to offer an alternative to someone or, or, or some group, because we don't want to turn anyone, aw anyone away that wants to use our facilities. Um, um, the overtime schedule as well is, is, is uh, it's, I don't, I, I use the word challenging. It's not challenging. It's just, you have to stay on top of it because um, we don't want to burn out our custodians either. And, and we just had a situation recently where someone rented our space and didn't leave when they were supposed to leave and the custodian had to stay much later. So we had to have, there, it's built into our contract that there's a higher fee for that. Um, we didn't charge the person, but we did have a pointed conversation with the person to explain that we have to respect our custodians and, and they have families and whatnot. Um, we also have to coordinate all that with um, trainings to use the theater. We, I had mentioned, Ms. Mara, that we want to get to that spot. Field lights and then the, the athletic schedule being postponed. Um, hopefully now in the winter there'll be less but we could get snow days. <coughs> but I hope not. Food services, it's pretty straightforward, right? If, if we're doing everything right in food services, th it, like we're not hearing very many um, complaints. The, the vendor we use is, is fantastic, very responsive. And again, I, I speak with her pretty regularly. Uh, a, a big thing is a lot of our equipment is very outdated in our kitchen areas. There's a lot of equipment that we haven't used in a long time that it's just sitting there and I've already told her that in my second year we're going to go through that list and, and put things, there's a whole process to get, r get rid of those things and I've already met with um, Evan downstairs, uh, the town manager, to, to understand how he wants us to approach that so that we can get rid of things that we're not not going to use and not planning on using. So she can have space so that her workers can do their job. Um, yeah, and then maintaining that equipment's tough. There's a, l there's a lot of uh, certifications that, that you have to stay up on that we're doing a, uh, quite a bit of job. And um, Dr. Cummins is our composting um, director. Um, <laughs> and title. it may be coming soon. Yeah. It may be coming soon. It's all about the cardboard trays, though. So I have to get the right cardboard trays. But he's working on that. <laughs> and then lastly is um, our capital in, in, in more larger projects. So uh, obviously when you have six buildings, uh, some of, a f you know, a couple of them are from the 60s and I think one of them might be the 50s. 59. Yeah, 59. So th there's, there's opportunities to um, invest in the envelope of the building or, or bigger projects to make them ADA compliant and, and everything else. So uh, just some things that we, I, I mixed these up on purpose because I figured you'd be like getting tired at this <laughs> point, and so I mixed <laughs> them up. Uh, one thing we completed recently was uh, two staff and one girl's bathroom at uh, GMS. They were redesigned, gutted, and updated, um, uh, which is way better situation than what it was before. Um, we still have a boys' room to do, and we are able to secure more funds. Uh, the HVAC system, the train HVAC system um, at the middle school, uh, the heat is on and, and working quite well. Uh, I'm getting trained, I think, next week uh, in, in how to use that new system on the computer program, which we'll, I, I'm pretty excited about. And the electric for the air conditioning is being run uh, over the holiday break. The conduit uh, is being run. So... We hope that that will be uh, ready to go. The turf fields at Grafton High School, um, turf fields, when they're installed, <coughs> the shelf life of those turf fields is only 10 years. I, I 
This is something I learned recently. Um, we're on year 12 for both those turf fields, and um, we uh, put a lot of energy and effort into um, getting them back to playable and safe. Uh, I had a couple of different companies come in and, and look at look at them, and uh, I think we're in a pretty good spot. We're in a much better spot than than a few months ago. So, over 200 tears in the in the football field, the main football field, were repaired uh, with glue and a little bit of stitching. Um, we did have I, I was able to find the patches where they could patch the, the fields, and it, it you know they sh it should be divot free. I don't know if you guys play on the field. Um, the playground at South Grafton, I don't think that was a capital uh, expense, but it was a large expense that, that was completed. Um, we just put in the last two uh, handicap uh, swings, uh, handicap accessible swings uh, today, this morning. So um, we're pretty excited about that. And North Grafton is going to be getting all new swings hardware in the, the swing seat. Um, we're going to update that because that hardware is pretty old and rusty um, and worn. The roof that was done was the North Grafton gym roof and the middle school library roof, and they are being reported as leak-free, which Ooh. is very exciting. Um, but we need some help with our North Street elementary school roof, the middle school, uh, excuse me, Millbury Street elementary in the foyer, and there's a couple of spots at the high school that we're exploring uh, maybe could be under warranty. So that, that's going to take a little work to explore that. Um, and then moving forward, another needed uh, thing is the PA systems in many of the schools need, need to be updated. And uh, the fire panel in, Mil in Millbury Street also needs to be updated. So. And I think that, yeah, that's it. Wow. Any questions? I know I went. I tried to go fast because Roseanne was talking about such great stuff. It is all about relationships, by the way. Yeah, Roseanne. you are also talking about great stuff. Um, I want to thank you so much, Frank. That's phenomenal. Um, I won't go on because I like to talk last, but um, I'm so impressed on what you've been able to accomplish um, in such a short time. Uh, this is the most comprehensive operations update I've ever seen, and <laughs> I am blown blown away so I'll turn that over um, to the committee if anybody has any questions you don't have to have questions Frank was pretty thorough but if you do you're welcome to have them yeah, so you it, it was extremely thorough and, oh, and thanks. wonderful and just great to see all the good things happening and you know thank you for preparing this it, it was it looks on the surface like these are these things are all over the place but but the way i like to look at it is it's the back of the house right in a, like in a restaurant it, mm -hmm. it, yeah. like if, if all these things are working then you don't know about the, them like the, yeah it's like a good umpire yeah right like if, if they're doing their job <laughs> then you there's no you don't you don't hear from them and and that's it's a little hard coming from being a principal sometimes you know being in the limelight but i, I like the behind the scenes i'm, I'm enjoying it so I had one question. Sure. I mean, it's all awesome. And as Laura said, this is the best operations update I've seen. Um, one of your slides, you had vending machines. And I was just curious, what, A, I didn't know we still had vending machines yeah. except for the water ones at the high school. What's in them? And yeah. do we need them now that we have the water bottle fillers <coughs> and the kids are bringing? So they have to meet certain guidelines. If they're open during the day, they have to meet certain um, guidelines. Yeah. Like Massachusetts has, I think it's Massachusetts. It could be federal, gui maybe it's federal guidelines. Um, I, I should know that though. Maybe. But we have to have vending machines? <clears throat> no, oh. no. Oh, oh, yeah, I see. If, if, okay. if they're on during the, the day, yeah. so that's why yeah. you can't get like a, 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 a Coke extra sugar Mm -hmm. you know, um, extra sugar. There, there's there's and, uh, guidelines. That well, that's one of the reasons why I'm surprised we we still have them because I know the ones well. at the high school are still filled with water. Mm -hmm. Teachers just have some though, right? In some of the teachers' lounge still. Yeah, no? that, that, that's not what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm talking about the I ones that are so. open to students. Oh, so, okay. but so somebody has to manage. It was just at the high school in at middle. The yeah. high school has one, and then there was a. This is this is what I'm talking about. There was an uh, an empty Aquafina machine there. From what I understand, it's been empty for two years. <laughs> so wow. that was that was two days of work to track down where, like, who's 
vending machine was that. Come get your machine. We finally <laughs> got that taken out That's last week. It was taken oh, nice. out yeah. last week at the high school. So now we have a gaping hole that we're probably going to put something like healthy snacks or more water. There, I noticed today there was there was a bunch of people crowding around a specific vending machine full of food. There was like something not coming out of it and everyone was like <laughs> trying to realize <laughs> whose vending machine it was. Was was this where the Aquafina yeah, machine was? Yeah, I think was? it might have been. I don't know. And um, people were like, who brought this in? We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and there was like it's, it's food service. Yeah, there the was NHS. this like, boy complaining. He was like, where's my beef jerky? It's not giving me my beef jerky. <laughs> so so um, the snack should be relatively healthy in there. Yeah. And, and I left that to Whit- Whitson's. Again, I didn't micromanage it. They're, they're, they, they stocked the There's machine. no like junk food or anything All, like, like that. Meat and stuff. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Sorry. So sorry for you guys. It's pretty boring. <laughs> boring. I mean, well, beef jerky is not <laughs> protein. Beef jerky is, depends on the beef jerky. Yeah. I mean, the, and, and, the, and there's yeah. also a, a, a an additional gaping hole at the middle school. There's two a spot for two vending machines. I don't know if you all remember, um, uh, and they they didn't want to give us a vending machine there because we don't move enough product at the middle school level, but we talked them into it because. We think we're going to move more product at the high school, so they're counting it as one campus, and they, they're going to fill that big void with another vending machine. So the, the middle school will probably have healthy snacks, like meat, crackers. Isn't there an upcharge I don't make the, where the we can the take some money off of these healthy <laughs> snacks? Um, it goes into our food service account, which okay. also, like, so the, <coughs> the um, purchasing and replacing equipment, um, I would rather not take that out of operational. Okay. The operational budget if I can and we have money mm-hmm. so we've been as things die we have a company come in and they say it'll cost X to fix or X to buy new and if it's close we're just going there <coughs> especially when they re- failed repeatedly like the machine yeah, the budget yeah. failed yeah. repeatedly anybody else um, yeah I wanted to add for the use of facilities um, I'm part of two groups and I've actually reserved two dates for a dance and for an event, and it's been a really good process, and oh, I didn't wow. know about it until I did, so we really appreciate the janitors and everyone because it, you do a great job in helping us, and it makes our job so much easier. You just touched my heart. <laughs> I, I will pass that on and spread that, that, that good, um, good, good feeling. What are the two groups, um, if you don't so mind? So it's uh, the class of 2025. We're hosting a winter dance. Yep. And then the other one is the regional student council, so for the region of our state. Oh, wow. um, we're hosting a winter conference, so it's a day of service, and people across the region will come and do a little service project. Be like, "Wow, this is such a nice school." That's great. <laughs> yeah, we we give the we give the school groups first dibs, and then the town groups second dibs, and then private and out of town, private people in town third, and then private out of town fourth. Mm-hmm. So we we try to make sure, but it. We don't want to say no to anybody. So if, if somebody else wanted to have something that same time as you, then we would meet with them and see if they could come up with an alternative time. So, yeah. That's great. Well, you said, you made a comment that you were kind of behind the scenes, and I think um, somebody that visits uh, school bus stops <laughs> and finds keys, and I know you're very present around, and your team is very present. I mean, custodians are such a big part of student life. Um, nurses are such a big part of student life. Um, so you're you're integral to everything. Um, so again, I just I hate to yeah. say it, but I feel like you knocked it out of the park. Right? <laughs> I was very. I was, he, he has been. Yeah, Laura, I was very concerned. Miss Austin, excuse me. You can I call was, me Laura. I was very <laughs> concerned about um, like stalking at the bus stops, like that. I would get some weird call, like some weird bearded guy is like hanging out at my kid's <laughs> bus stop, but I didn't get any calls. I was able to do it. Like I tried to. Just show myself, yeah. and if someone asked who I, I had my, my lanyard on, yeah. if they asked who I was, I would explain. Yeah, and uh, I bet that, I mean, to me, that's, like, above and beyond customer service, and I heard great things at the beginning of the year. I mean, and I also, I mean, just to think that that slide, I mean, that used to all be under you? The transportation? Which one? Well, transportation was with finance. All of these were under, most of these were under somebody. Some of, like, yeah. This is... This is brilliant. It's insane yeah. in a wonderful way. This is the first year that I didn't have to deal with one transportation issue. That's unheard of. It, it, it was definitely, it, it was in the double digits, but it was high. And I was going out to the bus stops, et cetera. I, in, in, Dr. It, Cummins uh, doesn't realize it, but that, like, that really makes me happy. Because that, like, that's my job, is to keep it, 
you know. Right. And it would impact finance, and now we don't have, he's right. yeah. it just, again, consolidated, and like every day is an adventure. I it, don't know. Like every day, Frank will come in, and I give him a hard time, but we figure out, like, the vending machines. Like, <laughs> we don't have a document. Like, uh, how do you figure that out? And he figures it out, and every day he comes back and does it again, and it's just made such an such a positive difference already. Um, I, I just can't say enough and about Frank, definitely, uh, and Shauna as yeah. well. You touched on the whole operations team, but uh, Shauna moving from oversight of custodial to now bigger picture, uh, as Frank mentioned, uh, they're just a wonderful team. Yeah, uh, this just feels so next level to me. Like I'm This is just the beginning. I know. Like, I'm so excited. But great job. Sure. Uh, and thank you so much for coming. We're always delighted to see you. And uh, happy holidays to you. Happy holidays. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. Thanks. Chris. And Ms. Mara, I'll, I'll let you know how things go in January. Thanks very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Also, if like you can hook us up with Madonna, that would be awesome too. <laughs> Madonna tickets yeah. would be great. I'm going. I'm already going. Oh, I'll have to tour Sarah. <laughs> So maybe maybe she could visit. Yeah, she could be a mystery reader in one of the schools. I'll tell you all about. I've just never all right. never read the Are you going? I'm going. Mm. Right. I think I can't accept that. I was gonna say, what's that worth? <laughs> <laughs> all right, Dr. Cummings, amazing December calendar. Is that new uh, record? Yes. Um, <laughs> on the <laughs> yes. Yeah, it might, it might This be. is what happens when he has more time. I kind of knocked this one out yeah, of the like park, it. pretty much. Um, I did want to just touch on the FY25 budget overview. In past years, I've aspired to have a, not completed, but say a 95% prepared budget. Um, Kathleen and I are working with the town on finalizing the uh, much talked about financial forecast for the next few years, which is going to obviously have a big impact on the FY25 budget and how we approach that. Um, so I'm confident that um, at hopefully the early January meeting, but certainly in January, that we'll have a, a completed uh, first draft of a budget book ready for the committee. So the 24-25 calendar, I, wanna, I put draft all over this uh, on purpose. We have, I don't know when it started, but at some point uh, to get the ball rolling in terms of the committee setting a calendar for the next year. Um, along the way, we figured out that I would essentially replicate, as long as it seemed to be okay, the previous year's calendar, put it into um, a 24-25 version, try to make it as close to perfect as I could, and hand it off. Then the committee can, over the holidays or in January, whenever they're ready, vote on a fi finalized calendar. Um, so basic assumptions, and I want to be clear, I haven't run this by a few different people just to look at it, is after you count the days so many times, you kind of can't see the forest for the trees, but I haven't really asked for feedback. Um, 180 school days, traditional vacation schedule, the two teacher days without students, so the, right, the day right before school students return, and a conference day in the fall. Um, and I put the conference day on November 5th. I did that because it's the state election day and the town has, and they always do, um, requested that we minimize um, the traffic or the, or the number of parking spots taken on that day. Um, for the, pre the last time we had a presidential election, we, had the we took the day off and the committee could certainly decide to do that if they chose. Uh, but for the purposes of an initial take, um, I did not. I think it's, I, I've looked at it countless times. I've had asked numerous people to take a look at it. Uh, nothing's jumped out as being off in any way, but I, I can't say that's an impossibility. Um, the one change that I would, I think, recommend, but certainly I, I would recommend that the committee consider is in October. Um, October 30th, I put that as an early release day. Um, one 
basically the president of our local Halloween fanatics club pointed out that the 31st is Halloween. And as you may recall, that's something that's been discussed in the past and I get labeled as hating Halloween or what have you. And I'm kind of neutral to it. I'm not a big fan. I think it was you. I have a long memory who brought that up. So go ahead. Okay. Um, <laughs> so it, that should at least be noted that I didn't pick the 30th to torture people. Um, it could be moved a day and maybe meet that need or that desire and give us a half day. Um, but aside from that, I think it's I think it's really solid, a, a good start. And I can take any questions you have, but I tried to keep it as straightforward as possible. Thanks, Jay. Any questions? I think the concern in the past was parents were confused if we didn't keep the uh, conferences on Wednesdays. <laughs> that was the that was the concern. Um, you know, I'm a I big fan of half day on Halloween, but I'm not going to fight that battle again. Oh, you mean the PD? The, no, it was parents the parent had conference. trouble finding childcare. Child care, right. It was very confusing if they're usually on Wednesdays and suddenly right. it was on a different day. Got that you. was the feedback it's that was given. Right. And so if we oh, move sorry. it, which we can, we are going to have potentially some issues with parking, and th that's always a challenge, and right. there's a lot to pull. Um, but we would, of course, do our best, and we'll try to figure something out. No, 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 I, I'm sorry. I misspoke. I didn't mean conferences. Oh, I thought you did. I, sorry. I misspoke. Thanks, Leor. I meant the Halloween Oh, okay. from a Wednesday to a Thursday. Got you. The reason why we stopped doing that was because there was concerns that parents were confused if sure. there was a sudden half day and that they – people on the committee had gotten feedback that um, just that it, it was hard for them to get child care if they would say, oh, we need Wednesday child care, and then all of a sudden they need a Thursday child care. We'll right. say we haven't had half days for the past two years, and I haven't heard any concerns about it. I guess there's somebody who is very – I am pro half day Oh, I Halloween. definitely get emails about Halloween, okay. so le I dread it. But, yeah, it definitely happens. But that, so what? I get yeah, I mean, emails get, about everything. So, I mean, I'm pro, but I'm not going to okay. fight it. <laughs> so that, that was the only thought. If, if that wasn't the decision and the worry was about consistency, there's nothing magical about the Wednesdays. Mondays are rough, I find, and Fridays are rough to have real meaningful PD days. But if they were all Thursdays, you wouldn't get pushback from me. Um, Okay, so that's what it is. Obviously, I, I think I've provided committee, but I'll, I'll do that again. Um, so we're not required to have a presidential election day off? Correct. Well, they have it off anyway. It's off. Right, isn't it? An, uh, it's the 5th. Right. November 5th. I'm asking if it's required. It's not required, no. Yeah, not required. No, it's not right. a state holiday. I, I, I wish it were, yeah. but it's yeah. not. Okay. But we had to, I think, I, I mean, I don't want to change that. I think... I think I feel pretty strong and, and yeah. about that. Th there are some, some districts that don't actually use the schools, right. so it's kind of right. a non-factor, but most do. Yeah. I think the fact, that especially a presidential election, yeah, right. I'm right. very strong on so that. So should we have conferences that day is what I'm, where I'm driving to there. I'm of two minds on that. Um, one, I would think parking would be a, a possible issue, but on the other hand, we have so many people that vote early and vote by mail that I feel like the parking for the election itself is probably not going to be as big an issue as it has been in the past. I believe all of our elections next year, and there will be four of them, will have both early and mail-in voting. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess I'm not that I'm not that concerned about it. I mean, I, I feel a little bad because the teachers obviously will have to work that day. Right. That's kind of where I'm going but with it. I mean, we don't – other businesses and other organizations yeah. don't give that day, so – yeah, and uh, the other thing is then we add an extra day to the calendar. So this was our conference. We had a long discussion last two years ago, so yeah. this is before you were on the committee about this, but it's fresh in my mind, and this was our compromise so we didn't have to extend the school, and I would bet if you asked teachers what they would prefer, if they could, they'd, rather be they'd done probably rather be done. I mean, I don't want to make an assumption, but I think it works. And I haven't uh, – I hope I was clear. I yeah, it's you did really say that. Really, primarily just yeah. And now, yeah. and this is a draft. We're not voting on it. So if right, there are right. concerns, people right. see it. We have time. But I like the. I, I still. I think Amy. I don't want to speak for you, but I think we're on the same line of this. I'm still concerned about safety and st with students in the school with rant. And I know we have a security guard, but especially at Mulberry Street. Also, like they use the gym. They use that. You know, and it's like taking away from instruction time. Like gym is a. You know, I just. 
it's messy to me and annoys me that we have them at the schools, but since we do, I'd rather the kids be I definitely think home. the kids shouldn't be there on election day. I was just Yeah, no, you were asking about conferences. I get yeah. that. But I think logistically adding that other then we'll have to yeah, have fair two enough. days and it's you know, and we have Veterans Day and then there's people. the whole no school November anyway. Right, which is <laughs> silly. I still because we it's a little better this year. I feel like yeah. I feel like it's we have better. Less school I felt in right December, too. Yeah. but nobody ever blames December. But um, anyway, I'm good. Okay. But if okay. anybody has concerns, obviously, if you go home and think about it, and you know, we have time. Yeah, right. Plenty of time, but at least this gives people probably a good general idea on when the first day is and when the last, and that's usually what people care about is planning vacations mm -hmm. in advance. So, okay. All right, I just had a, a few things for superintendent update. Thank Last you. night I had the opportunity to attend the computer science honor society induction ceremony. Were any of you guys in there? Oh, come on. Um, Meg's it was face. Uh, really, really <laughs> well done. Um, it was uh, held in the auditorium. Uh, a few speakers, Deb Goodwill was kind of the guest speaker. Uh, anyhow, it was just really nice. Uh, I thought Thank well done all around. I think it's the second year for this society. Um, a reminder to everybody in the community that the GHS gymnasium is going to be dedicated to the great Jim Pignataro on uh, Monday, December 18th at 6.15 p.m. right before the basketball game. Um, wonderful guy, made a tremendous impact on thousands of, of students and, and certainly on myself and many adults as well. So um, really looking forward to that. It was incredibly well-deserved. And then I, I, my last thing, I just wanted to basically thank the, the staff, in particular, um, well re definitely everybody, um, Jen Mannion and Nicole McDonald really took the lead on the DESE tiered focused monitoring uh, system review. And it's an ongoing system, this uh, team of DESE individuals, really nice folks. Uh, we worked with them for months, I mean, hours and Tens of, it did lots of time. It was, I bet if you added up, it was over 30 hours of, of group work that went into this. Um, and it all came to fruition. Last week, they visited the district. Uh, they toured every single school. They interviewed staff. They interviewed some parents. They interviewed students. Basically checking on how the district is doing in terms of compliance around special education and civil rights. Uh, not the most exciting work, but really important work. They looked for the whole last year at all of our documentation, policies, handbooks, all that stuff. Um, and we did exceptionally well, which uh, that was fantastic. This was the first time, and I've been through a lot of these, th this type of visit and this type of process. This was definitely the most positive and the most impactful on the district. Um, they'll definitely have things that we need to work on or improve on, but that, that's how it should be. And then we do that, they come back in three years, and it's just a rolling process. So uh, it was actually strange to say that about a DESE audit, but it was a great experience for us. Um, I'm very thankful for all the work that we did and for the, th the work of the group that came out and visited. So uh, I think it was a job well done all around. And that's all I have. Thank you. Questions. Any questions? Good guy. All right. Thanks. Perfect. All right. We have our student rep reports. Who's going first? Yeah, I can go first. Okay. Um, okay. The NHS induction ceremony is January 9th at 6. Tomorrow is GHS and GMS holiday instrumental concert at 7 p.m. Um, we have the December, eight, uh, December 18th at the gym, the um, dedication, the like Jim Pignataro. And then it's also the two 1,000 point scorers in town history. And semester one grades close January 26th. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, the winter day of service. Um, if you have more questions about that, let me know, because it's a kind of a big thing. We're hosting kids across the um, region to our school, which is exciting. 
Um, and then the class of 2025 is looking to host a winter dance on Jan January 20th. Almost everything's set right now. Um, we just need to confirm a couple more things and more information will be sent out. And then for student council, we're organizing a coat drive and then they're selling candy grams at lunch. So. Awesome. We love the candy grams. That's <laughs> great. Is um, the dance open to everybody or is it just for the class? Of yeah, so it's going to be all I for mean, classes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I can't go. No, unfortunately not. <laughs> it's a bummer. <laughs> That's awesome. Great job. Any questions for our students? All right. You may certainly leave. Happy holidays to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. For you too. Um, do we have, a, we have a school committee meeting at NHS night? Do we? Is it the ninth? You said it was the ninth? Yeah, it oh, is I the ninth. Nice. So I think they yeah. overlap. Yeah. yeah. But it starts at six, so we can we can head for a little bit and then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're all in NHS though, so if they don't worry that. about it. You oh, that yeah. comes you first do your for thing. sure. Yeah. You can don't submit worry your about reports it. ahead of time in writing. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> read that. Yeah, send. Amy can do it. I'll read uh, it. Yeah. Representatives for us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you can you send. Uh, well, yeah, that's great. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, have a happy. Yeah. Have a good break. Wait, I don't know if you get break, but. <laughs> oh, I get. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I get a break. Not in the same way. No. <laughs> Awesome. Okay. Future agenda planning. Here we go. Let's see. So, yeah, we have a January 9th meeting. We're going to get our first updates. That's great. So, we'll see Steve and Joanne and friends. Um, we'll have a budget, hopefully, presentation. Um, and we'll see what else we add between now and then, probably. There'll be things, I'm sure. Yeah. It's a late agenda, so. Is CPAC ready to come back, maybe? I can reach out and ask. Yeah, I haven't I talked know. to them. I, know. I reached so. out, obviously. I think I told you guys. Yeah. yeah. They were changing leadership. Yeah. I haven't. You might be jumping the gun. I don't know, but I just wanted yeah. to keep yeah. it top yeah, of mind. Thank you. Yeah, we definitely that want nice. That may be nice to kick off the year, too. Mm -hmm. um, always. Okay. And of course, if anything comes up in and between then. now and then. If the committee chooses, we can put calendar. Oh, we should. We could put oh, yeah. it on both, uh, whatever you want. Yeah, we but should. I think by January we should. I mean, obviously Liz and Rebecca aren't here, but hopefully right. they'll right. take a look. And if they have anything, I mean, it's a, almost a month. Yeah. So we'll send it over and we can talk about it. But it seemed pretty straightforward. Okay. Um, now I turned away from my agenda to look at the approval of minutes. Yes. Um, I move that the committee accept the minutes of October 24th, 2003 as written. Move second. I second the motion. Excellent. Motion made and seconded. Any third further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. All right. Motion carries 3-0. October? We don't have November yet. No. Uh, sorry, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> November we just have what? the one minutes. Warrant? minutes. No. Oh, minutes. the minutes? No, yeah. we don't. Yeah. Well, I don't think we do. No, I, I didn't see them, but that doesn't uh, mean. Yeah, they, I'll check. That, that may be on me, but. Is she seriously? Yeah. She's probably. She probably did. A weak link is me, I'm sure. Okay. It's fine. Yeah. I'm, I'm all right with that. <laughs> I'm getting used to <laughs> being the weak link. Right. When but she, she's say been Jake Cummings, I have to say Rebecca Mahoney has been She's amazing. Awesome. Yeah, and she gets back to me with corrections usually when she watches yeah, the meeting no, and I hears them. She's doing yeah. so She's been great. great. Um, okay. Warrants. Madam Chair. Yes. I move the committee accept warrant number twenty two, dated eleven thirty twenty three, in the amount of two hundred and fifty seven thousand three hundred and seven dollars and fifty one cents. Second. Motion and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, motion carries 3-0. Madam Chair. Yes. I move the committee accept warrant number 22R, dated 11-30-2023, in the amount of $2,736.91. Second. Motion is seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Great. Motion carried. Thank you. 
Um, policy, I do have a quick update in that all of our policies are over at MASC, uh, thanks to Liz and me. And, um, <laughs> and I did hear back from Amory, she's working on them, so we're on schedule. I'm hopeful this by the end of the month. Um, so that'll be very exciting. And then there were some updates that just came out in the um, December policy update. So we'll get back to kind of reviewing and looking at any ones that have come up. But super excited about this. Thanks for everybody's patience. Um, it's going to be, it's just good. So that's it for policy. Member report. Amy Marr. Um, the uh, Capital Planning and Improvement Committee is meeting on Thursday oh. um, to reorganize and talk with Evan about capital priorities coming up. So it'll be our first time as a group coming together at all. Um, and I imagine, I don't know, has this gone to Evan? Oh, yeah. So he'll have that. So we'll probably start talking about that. I know their five year isn't done, um, but we'll be discussing some kind of timeline for that, yeah. I think. Okay. Um, so the focus will be probably on fiscal 25 and then going forward from there to have an actual five year capital plan, which would be great and would make us all feel a lot better. Yeah, amazing. Thanks, Amy. Um, I'm not gonna drink all day long. We've had a long break, but Amy, Rebecca, and I had the privilege to attend the MASC conference. We learned a lot. We bonded a lot. Um, so that was good. Um, I know a bunch of us went to see the play. Uh, that was good. We had football games that were amazing that people went to. Um, so we've been trying to do our best to be out in the community and in the area. And I think that's it hmm. for me. I feel like a lot happened, but that's OK. Um, all right, correspondence. I haven't received any. Um, we do need to go into executive session. Before we do, Madam Chair, I make a motion that we go into executive session to discuss a strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body, and the chair so declares. Excellent. Second. All right, motion is seconded. This needs to be a roll call vote. Amy Mar. Mar aye. Amy Mar Brown, aye. Laura Often, aye. Okay, we will um, adjourn only back into open session to adjourn. That I messed that up, but we will only be back in open session to adjourn. Um, so good night, everybody, and have a uh, happy holiday season and a uh, happy new year. Good night.